Okay, so um, this is the most important part of trig. This is like the building block for the most important stuff we're going to do and probably the most important stuff you're going to do in Math 12. So if you're planning on tuning out, please wait until fourth period today. Um, the uh, idea is pretty simple, but uh, it's going to put you in a place where it's not really comfortable. Uh, Math 12 is the first course you're going to take where there's a calculator permitted and not permitted section of your course. So there's going to be some things in Math 12 where we say, Okay, you may not use your calculator to do these questions, and everybody puts their calculator on the floor. And then when we finish that, those exams are collected up, and then you start again with a calculator. So everyone's, oh my god, no calculator, oh my god, right? But uh, we're going to show you one of the things that you can do here that you're expected to know how to do some exact values without a calculator. Okay, so in order to do that, you need to be able to produce some triangles. These are the two triangles you need to know. The first one is an isosceles triangle, where both sides have length 1. So what will that make the uh, hypotenuse? Square root of 2 is correct. So it's going to be square root of 2. Okay, so this one's important. Um, can you figure out what the angles are in that triangle? 45 and 45, that's right. So let's write them in as 45 degrees and 45 degrees. How did you know that? 180 minus the 90 we've already used. It's isosceles. You've got to divide by 2. So basically what I've tried to just show you here is you only need to remember two features of that triangle. It is an isosceles triangle. The lengths are 1. Everything else you can figure out once you've gotten that far. Okay, so isosceles triangle, lengths 1. Oh, no. Isosceles, um, length 1. Did I spell that right? Uh, okay, it's isosceles. I saw. Okay. Um, I don't know why that looks so terrible as well, but let me try that again. So here's triangle number two that you need to be able to reproduce with no other aids, no calculators, or anything. Um, this is an equilateral triangle. Links are two this time. So this side is 2, this side is 2, and this whole side here from this end to this end is 2. Okay, so this is equilateral, sides are 2. So let me show you what part we're interested in. I don't think I spelled that right, but that's okay. We'll save that for English class. Maybe they'll put that on your, uh, your spelling test. You guys still get spelling tests in English? I used to love those. I used to rock those. Apparently, I, I have forgotten a lot since then. Okay, um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try and take part of this triangle out that we're interested in. So here's the part that I want. I want a right angle triangle so I can talk about sine and cosine. And I'm actually going to split this angle right down the middle because if I chop this, if I split that angle down the middle, then I also split the side of the triangle in half. So that means this length is 1, this length is 1. Can we figure out the angles inside that triangle? Like how about this corner right here? Can anybody figure out what that corner angle is? Yeah, it's an equilateral triangle, so this would have to be 60 degrees. Okay. So what's the last angle? Good, 30 is the last one. And we're missing a side. So this side over here, what's the uh, length of the side right there? Yeah, square root of 3. So that'll be 2 squared minus 1 squared. Uh-oh, don't go to sleep yet. There we go. Um, which is square root of 3. So this length here is square root 3. So it's important that you don't just memorize the triangles, because in my experience, students who just try to memorize all the numbers, they make mistakes because there's a lot of numbers to memorize. You want to mem remember this is the isosceles triangle with length 1 and build the rest of it. This is the equilateral triangle, length 2, build the rest of it. Okay, That way there's fewer things to memorize. But now that we've got these triangles, that's what we're going to focus on is this triangle here. So I'll call this triangle number 1, and I'll call this triangle number 2. So can you tell me what the exact value of the sine of 30 degrees would be? Without using your calculator. <laughs> How did you how did you do that without a calculator? You just you have the brain calculations, you can just do that? It's the oh, you blew it. You were supposed to say yes, my brain can handle that calculation. But yes, it's the second triangle. 
Sine of 30 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. So it's 1 half. Okay. What about the cosine of 30 degrees? Root 3 over 2. Here's 30 degrees. The adjacent side is this one. And the hypotenuse is this one. So root 3 over 2 is how I get the exact value for cosine. Okay, we'll try one more here. What is the tangent of 30 degrees? 1 over root of 3 is correct. It is the opposite over the adjacent. There's 30 degrees. So it's going to be 1 over root 3. Okay, at this point, some of you are probably going, uh-oh, there's a radical on the bottom. He's made a mistake. Um, if you want, you can answer it in um, where you've rationalized the denominator. But as far as trig goes, for me, I don't care as long as you can produce the knowledge that shows me you know the exact values. Okay? Does the marker of the test care? On the provincial exam <coughs> in grade 12? Um, you'll find in Math 12 that they, they would most likely have this answer on your... That's more likely that what you'd see as a choice if it was multiple choice or something else. Is that right or wrong? They're both correct answers, but this is easier to relate to the triangles because this one here takes an extra step of rationalizing the denominator. But you got to, you know, at some point you get so far into math that you really have to wonder what you're testing yourself on. For example, if you got it wrong because you put it in this format, that doesn't tell me that you uh, don't know your trig. It tells me that you don't know how to rationalize the denominator, right? So what am I testing you on? If this was math 12 and I was testing you on the exact values, that's what I care about is can you produce that number, right? Like the further up you get, you, at some point you've got to start saying, okay, the rest is not as significant as, you know, you know the background of it. Does that make sense, I, I hope? Okay, so what I want you to do is try and fill in the two rows for 45 and 60 and I'll catch up to you. Okay, so for pi over 4, or sorry, we're not in radians here, we're in 45 degrees. Um, that's going to be 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and 1, 1 divided by 1. If we go to um, 60 degrees, I'm in triangle number 2, and the sine is going to be root 3 over 2. It's going to be uh, 1 over 2, and it's going to be root 3. Okay, so um, we're okay so far? Yeah, okay, good. So now we also need to work, work out how we get our exact values because our reference <laughs> angles are going to be somewhere in that first quadrant. We might also have to work with these numbers as well, 0 and 90. So we did that last day, and what we looked at, I'm going to have to draw, I'm running out of space here. I'm going to have to draw a small one, but there's my unit circle. Okay. Let's put in a point here. What are the coordinates on this point? from my unit circle? One zero. one, zero, yes. And what are the coordinates of this point here? Zero, one. Zero, one. So how did we use that information? What did it mean to us on the unit circle? It'd be like the sine, uh, 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 and the cos, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> did anybody use them in a sentence? Us, uh, not quite. Do you remember what was the connection between the... Yo, DJ, keep going with that. Um, there's an X and a Y. There's an X and a Y, that's correct. But what about it? How does it connect to the unit circle? <laughs> well, sine is one of them and cosine is the other one. Think about the cast rule. Which one has to be the sine? X. Sine is Y because of these two coordinates, uh, these two uh, the quadrants are positive, <laughs> then that has to be uh, the y coordinate for sine. So um, we'll just we might as well refresh our memory there. Y is the sine of the angle, x is the cosine of the angle. So what angle does it make when I'm right here at uh, one zero? What is the angle when I'm right on that dot? What's the angle? Not the cosine, not the sine. What's the angle? Here, you want me to draw it for you? Too much. Zero. zero, yes. <laughs> it is zero. So the angle here is zero. What's the angle right here? Zero. Zero. It is 90, right? That's okay. But now we can come up with the exact values at zero and 90. Because at zero, if I use this spot here, it tells me the exact value for cosine is one. The exact value for sine is zero. 
if I go to, oops, I've just done that in the wrong part of the chart, excuse me. At zero degrees, the sine is going to be um, here at zero, and the cosine is going to be one. At 90 degrees, it's these values, uh, zero for x, one for y. Now the tangent, do you remember how the tangent connected to sine and cosine? Sine over cos, so zero over one is zero, one over zero is error, error or what we call undefined, okay? So you need to, uh, basically you need to be able to reproduce this chart in full.